Well, I forgot to film an intro for this video, so filming it kind of after everything is all set and done here, but I spent the past couple weeks getting the duster dialed in, adjusting and fixing a couple things after the big trip. So it took a little bit more time than I wanted to, but that's fine. Just kind of slow down the pace after going pretty hard on that thing for a couple months and then obviously spending the whole winter working on this thing here. This video is just a recap of everything that I had to go through and kind of fix and improve. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Went on a good road trip last weekend down to the Good Guys show in Columbus and knock on wood, the car seems to be doing pretty fine so far. So hope you guys enjoy this one, but next week we will be back on this thing. Issue number one to fix and arguably the most important one is the power steering pump keeps leaking out of the return line and that is because the pump is putting out too much pressure for the rack. Just something I completely overlooked when putting this all together because the QA1 front coilover kit comes with a Mustang 2 rack. This is a GM type two power steering pump. So this puts out about 1300, 1350 PSI and the rack is good to about 1000, 1100. So there's a two to 300 PSI difference right there. And it wasn't a major issue on power tour, but it was leaking power steering fluid and every day I would have to top it off. It'd probably drain out half the reservoir and brad was actually telling me that there is a pressure reducer kit so i went ahead and got one of those and that's what i'm gonna get installed on this thing right now it's pretty simple there's just a couple shims and an o-ring right here this is just a kit from borgeson it's fairly common nothing too crazy i'll throw the part number down below if anyone needs it but it comes with like i said the shims the o-ring and then it's got this kind of protective sleeve because you have to take the pressure valve out this guy is going to go over the little valve that's going to go in the vise right here i'll take this nut off the top and then once it is apart it looks something along the lines of this and you can see it says place shims right there they're going to go on that little shank and if I put three shims in there, this should knock it down to about a thousand PSI. And just like it says here, Mustang Rack Opinions require about a thousand PSI. So do all that, then get the power steering pump back in the car, can put the fans back in, the shroud back in, and then hopefully that'll fix my power steering leak issue. The first thing is to adjust a couple things on the headers and the exhaust here. If you look closely, you can see I had to put a notch in the primary tube that goes around the coupler right there. And then there's one that's around the bottom of that coupler. And that's because at the last minute I had to change these couplers and the steering shaft. I didn't have any inch and seven eighths tubes to redo this primary. So I put a notch in it and then I basically took a two and a half inch tube and laid it in there, welded it up, metal finished it. So. It was uh, better than bashing in the headers or trying to make something work for just, you know, the time being. This was kind of the best solution for the week. But I do have a new bend piece. I got a couple more uh, ordered them. They showed up. So I'm going to go ahead, cut that section out, and then redo that. Basically, just kind of push it a little more back and just kind of tuck it up. That way it's not anywhere near this new steering shaft. You can kind of see these notches that I had to put into it. And this gives me a more clear vision of where I want to cut this section out. So this back part, I'm gonna cut out right about here because that'll give me a full good area to weld all the way around when I put the new tube in. And then on the other side here, we'll cut it right here. So it's gonna be a pretty solid piece it's going to be a very painful cut, I'm not going to lie, but it has to be done with that new steering shaft and those couplers there. So get that out, and then this whole piece essentially needs to be tucked back. So I got a couple new bends. They're going to rotate closer to this tube. It's going to come up here. It's probably going to be down here, and then it'll come up like this and connect to this area right here.
Okay, header is complete. I finished redoing that primary tube there, which is this guy. And then since that one looks brand new and the rest obviously were colored due to the heat, I decided to go through and polish them just with some Scotch-Brite, which took way longer than it should have, but I think it'll actually look better in the end because you won't see the heat from the welds around all the welds. So I think it'll be a cleaner look and hopefully then the entire header will start to look how the collector looked right here. So I really like like that kind of color on it. Um, but other than that, the primary was pretty simple. This one, I actually got closer to the same length as the other ones and the bend looks a lot tighter. So not only does it look better, but it'll fit a lot better around the steering column as well, which is obviously the big thing there. So now that that is out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead, put the headers back on the car. I went through and I polished that one right there as well. So that's looking all good. Get these guys back up on the car, finish cleaning up the cross member. That way I can make the notches for that. I gotta get these in there though, so I know the exact position of the exhaust. And then uh, put the steering shaft back together. Hopefully knock out the torsion bar, well, the torsion bar cross member that is no longer used for torsion bars. Knock out the braces for that. Exhaust hangers and uh, should be rocking and rolling. Hopefully can get the car back together by the end of this weekend. Fitters are back in. I got the steering linkage and steering shaft all put back together. I just gotta toss another coat of paint on the steering shaft itself. But everything is looking good. Very happy with how they look now that they're polished. And now that those are on, I gotta go through and make the notches in the torsion bar cross member. So I got the exhaust bolted up to the V-bands. I'm gonna go through and polish the X-pipe as well here. But yesterday, before I had the exhaust on, I went through and just kind of cleaned up the cross member here. So it's not 100% done yet, but it gives me enough space to make the templates and then get the exhaust up in here. This was the only way I could run it because if I wanted to use the factory notches and the cross member, it would have had a pretty tight bend coming out of the end of the collector. And that's not something I really wanted to do just to restrict the flow and alter the sound. I wanted to have a straight piece going back pretty much into the X. So I had to cut out the buckles for the torsion bars. So this car is at the point where it will no longer be going back to torsion bars. Not that I was planning on it anyway, but that leaves a weak point in the cross member here, obviously, and the cross member holds up the transmission and the floor pan. So I'm gonna go through, I got my templates made for some boxes. You can see that one there is all notched out. That side's all notched out as well. Template wise, this is going to be for the driver side. So each side is going to be a little bit different just because the center line of the car is once again not in the center of the car. It drives me nuts, but that's how Mopar did it. So it is all offset to the passenger side by an inch and a half. And because of that, the buckle on the cross member is an inch and a half closer to this frame rail. Opposed to that side, it's an inch and a half farther away. So it's going to have to make these braces slash caps a little bit different. On the passenger side, I also have the fuel line and I wanna make that drop out from the bottom. That way I don't have to kind of fish it through the cross member, which I had to do to get it out originally. And I don't like that. I wanna make this easily removable. So right here, this would be the passenger side, the start of it. So this will be one half. Then the end of this piece right here is where the fuel line will be able to slide up into the cross member. And then I'll have to make another little cap kind of on this side to cap off the other side of the cross member. It'll make a lot more sense once I get it made of metal and I'll show you guys. The driver's side here is fairly simple. It's gonna take a couple pieces, but this is the general shape right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this all cut out, get it tacked together. This side should be done. I'm gonna go ahead and get this front part tacked together for the passenger side, get this mocked up, measure my distance for the fuel line, make the other half of it, and then fully weld it and get them welded on the car there.
Right, exhaust is back installed, which means the torsion bar cross member notches are complete. I went through and polished the rest of the exhaust here as well. Got those braces all the way welded up and picked the worst time to show you guys this and I'll let it stark out, but they're in there. You can see I got clearance. I made a little notch for the fuel line right here, which runs all the way up to the front, obviously. Everything clears the cross member for the transmission. So I'm pretty happy with the way that that little project came out. I got some undercoating on it just to match the rest of the bottom here as well. Really wanted to do a round kind of notch instead of the box style. I just didn't have any round tubing, nor was I gonna go through and attempt to bend eighth inch plate to a three inch diameter to go around the two and a half inch exhaust pipe here. So that's just uh, the way it's gonna be. It does give me a little bit more space if I ever decide to change the exhaust setup or go to a bigger diameter exhaust pipe. I got a little more space now. So on the plus side of things, there's that. Right here, you can really see where the exhaust passes through the cross member, and, and then obviously just kind of sandwiches the existing cross member there as well. I figured that's probably going to be the strongest route to go, especially since I had to take a big chunk out of that. But then again, it's not a huge structural part to the car anymore. No. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this exhaust here. I built this the day before the power tour trip, so it could be a little bit better, but the thing that I really don't like about it is how the center line for the drivetrain on these cars is inch and a half to the passenger side, and it just throws everything off. If you guys remember when I built the headers, I said I made those symmetrical to the engine opposed to symmetrical to the car, so it shifted over with the engine as well, which therefore pushes the exhaust over to the side as well. But I wanted the X on um, the X pipe to be centered in the car. That way, when I route the boom tubes out to the side here, they end up on the same part of the car. Otherwise, it would have been staggered, and I didn't want that. So as you can see, I pretty much have 145 on the other side. It gets me straight to the X. But then on this side here, I had to do kind of a little squiggly, which is what it is. It, uh, it gets the exhaust where it needs to go, and I guess that's what really matters. Gonna wrap it up for the adjustments slash changes on the duster after the power tour trip there. The one last thing that I wanted to do that I kind of changed my mind on was making new exhaust hangers for the boom tubes because the ones I had on there before were just old. The rubber was a little deteriorated so they were starting to sag. I had a different idea for a different style of exhaust hanger I wanted to use so it wouldn't happen but I took the boom tubes off last week. We went down to the Good Guys show in Columbus just because I wanted to see what it would sound like without them. And honestly, I think it sounds a lot better without them. Especially at idle, because those things kind of muffled it. They have baffles in them. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do here is basically just do straight pipes out of the X, out to the side, so it'll be pretty much straight from the rocker all the way to before the X, and then it'll just have that 145 where it goes into the header. So that should sound pretty good. I gotta order a couple extra view bands, and some tubing, and some different hangers to do that, but that's a quick weekend project, nothing too crazy. I'll do that in the future, but honestly for now, it sounds pretty good with the exhaust just ending right after the X pipe there. So that's gonna wrap it up for things on that car for the time being. I would like to just be able to drive it for a substantial amount of time now that everything is kind of tidied up and dialed in. Just a couple other events I wanna hit throughout the rest of the year with that car, but just gonna enjoy it for the time being now that it is up and running again. As you guys can see behind me, I rolled the charger in here. I've been working on it the last week, so we'll have some videos rolling out on this thing again real soon here. Other than that, I just spent the past few weeks kind of just catching up with that car. I had some things that need to get done on the truck, just some maintenance things, nothing too exciting, but stuff that got put off for the past couple of months since I was working on this thing over the winter and then rolled right into that thing to get ready for power tour there. So just needed a couple weeks to sort things out, get caught up on that. 
had to clean some things up and uh, fix some tools in here. But other than that, appreciate everyone watching and uh, see you in the next video there.